I'm JD the Media Jack, and welcome to another edition of the Flipside Podcast, episode 466. First of all, a big thank you to everyone who has been supporting me on Patreon so far. If you would like to support me and everything I do here, with a podcast or just all my work in general on social media and on YouTube, just feel free to support me on Patreon. Just search for the Media Jack, all one word. The link is in the description down below. And a big thank you to our executive producer yet again for this month. It is Red Wolf Dawn. There are different tiers on how you can support me if you like, and they're all there with perks. So feel free. Again, no pressure, but I really do appreciate it. Now, on to the episode. It's surprising where the world can take you, and just a simple little decision of downloading an app can take you into an entirely different direction when it comes to your content, as well as your life in general. A prime example of this, as you will find out for yourself, is Old Man Murphy from Well Hey Productions on TikTok, and he's right now on the Flipside Podcast. You're going to join us just as we're about to start talking, and he's admiring my video game collection. It's the only thing that keeps me going after a seven-hour on-air shift. So. <laughs> I am admiring your NES collection behind you, sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I want to. I, 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 my, my brother who lives in, uh, in Minnesota, he still has our original NES, and he's got all of the games, um, and. Um, so whenever I see like anyone that's got a collection of NES, I just scan. I said, "Yeah, I had that one. I had that one. I had that one. I had that one." And yeah. the one game we absolutely loved to play it was it really wasn't that diff- it was more of a button masher. It's called Guerrilla War. Oh, uh, and you, you you basically you're just two one man armies that just go through this entire island. And you like try to infiltrate this drug lord that's at the at and you fight bosses and it's you pick up you know like like if if you can remember Contra where you could like yeah. pick up different weapons and you got the spread and then yeah. you got the flamethrower and then all that stuff. Uh, it's kind of like that. Uh, you can actually hop in little tanks and you uh, try to rescue POWs and everything like that. And there's a boss at the end of every level, and it's just really a lot of flashing lights. And it took us maybe. Uh, it took us, I would say, maybe two, two and a half hours to go through the entire game from start to finish. But I mean, that was that was like our Saturday night entertainment before <laughs> MST3 came came along. So, yeah, th- re- th- <laughs> really fond memories. Of- <laughs> Guerrilla War. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Uh- I'm going to have to find that one. I, that's one I do not have. I, I, um, I can oh. I guarantee you that. But okay. um, th- this all started because, mm. like you, like I had an original NES system. Mm. And uh, as years went on, I upgraded to different systems, whatever, and all of a sudden um. retro became niche. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. shit, I guess. <laughs> Damn. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I look online and I look at all these games. Like, I had that, I had that, I had that, yep. I had that. And then look at the price tag these days. Go, yeah. fuck, I could have retired. Yeah. <laughs> When when Link, uh, was it an, uh, Legend of Zelda with the gold cartridge? I yeah, remember number two. Everyone just, oh, yeah. it was it was Link. Uh, uh, yeah, Link's yeah. adventure. Yeah, everyone was just like, oh my god, this is gonna be worth some. And I think I, I since everyone ha- had it, it was just about as priceless as everyone having Frampton Comes Alive. And it was just like, <laughs> oh, you can sell it for fifty cents. I I did. 50 weeks of paper <laughs> jobs just to get this Nintendo game, and it's 50 cents, son of a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I get it. 100%. It's like Beanie Babies and all that shit. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. well, that's why I didn't... Yeah, and <laughs> so. it was that, it's that one game, though, that you look back on, like, I couldn't beat that game worth yeah. anything. And nowadays, like... Fuck! I had that thing sitting in my in, mm. in my dresser for like years when I was a child, mm. and I just threw it away. And now it's yep. 175 bucks. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. I re- no. There's so, those, some of those games that is just you know, like Ghosts and Goblins that you know, oh, yeah. no one could ever get past. And Ninja Ga- uh, Ninja Gaiden, I, that one was near impossible for me. So yeah, it's a, but I mean now with gaming. It's oh, just everything is just like, oh, well, we'll just keep on. You can start right back from where you left off and we'll yeah. hold your hand. There's a tutorial. I'm like, we didn't have that shit. What you talking oh. about? The the entire premise of, of save points was just non-existent. And yeah. you had to memorize some sort of weird, obscure code. Yep. Uh, 
but uh, you know, to get help, like there's there's one there's one story I love to tell, and I tell mm-hmm. this to a few of my friends and uh, my younger coworkers, whatever. Mm-hmm. There was a game that I have. I had to rebuy it because I just had to. It was called Wall Street Kid, and did not know how to fucking play this thing for the life of mm-hmm. me. Sat there for like I think I rented it for like three days and then sat there and just could not figure it out. Kept losing, kept losing, kept losing. Mm-hmm. Finally called the Nintendo Hotline off of off of Nintendo Power. Called Nintendo Hotline and said I'm playing this game. I don't know what to do. And you could hear the person in the background like gears grinding and smoke mm-hmm. billowing. Like, oh, uh, the only tip we have is continue to talk to your receptionist. That's the best tip we have. I'm sorry. Click. Like, I just spent five bucks online to get mm. that bullshit tip. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have the internet back then. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the, the best we yeah, that Nintendo Hotline. Yes, and then when Game Genie came out, mm. that was a goddamn godsend. <laughs> and because I mean, you try you you try to play Battle Toads climbing up oh. the elevator shaft. And then you get to Robo Manus, and it's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> He's peppering me with lead every five seconds, stomping on my ass. I just had to fight a big goddamn rat after surfing. Yeah, yeah. What the shit? And and then and then you get the game game genie in there. You got infinite lives. Is like, oh, this is fun now. <laughs> Oh, I get it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, good Mem- times. Yeah, good memories. Time. Oh, yeah. And people why people wonder why people our age are so yeah. messed up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you have much of a game collection yourself? Uh, let's see. Most of my games uh, uh, are on Steam. So, I, I mean, uh, I'm a big Final Fantasy nut. Uh, and right now I'm streaming. I got I got a, a stream uh, stream channel on Twitch. Uh, and I'm right now I'm going through Final Fantasy VII Classic. Oh. Uh, the great thing about about the time this time going through because I bought it when I had my PS One. Right. So I I went through it. I got the the game book by Brady Games, so I knew exactly what to go and where to get all the materia and everything like that. Yeah. Um. But you know there was still you know I mean I didn't really feel like spending the hours upon hours upon hours of time to you know really level up my guy so I could fight the the emerald and ruby weapon at the end and you know right. because from what I heard you get these two little things and then you bring them back to this one guy and then it really doesn't do much and I'm like well okay I'm not <laughs> gonna go bother I I just wanna I just wanna fight this. This white-haired guy with the sword. That's it. So, <laughs> I mean, now this time around, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, you know what? I, I, uh, the second time I played it, you know, on the on the PS1, I actually did play it long enough to actually do some chocobo training, and uh, the uh, that so I could get that that really powerful summon that Knights of the Round because I heard everyone said oh, it's the most awesome thing I've. I've I've seen before. I'm like, okay, why not? So I spent, you know, like the extra forty hours just doing that. Mm-hmm. What I'm doing now, I mean, I'm still playing, just going through, and I'm, you know, I'm reminiscing. I'm just, you know, reverting twenty years back, and I'm like, oh my god, I can remember this. Uh, I have this uh, library of mods called uh, Seventh Heaven, mm. and what it does is, you know, it uh, when you first uh, install it and launch it, it asks you know where your game files are, where your save files are going to be. Where the media files are all are all located, and then you can download all these different libraries that just upgrade the textures. Uh, they swap out the soundtrack so it's fully orchestrated. You the the UI is a lot, you know, better developed and everything like that. So it's just it upgrades it from the rinky dink game that it used to be, and it just gives it a fresh new feel. And everyone that's you know watching me do that, we're all enjoying it. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm being a kid again. So I'm like, this is fun again yeah. for me. And everyone's like, I've, I've heard of these characters, but I, who's this Cloud Streif guy? Oh my god, he gave me a heart attack. Duh. And then we had this big discussion on how to actually pronounce Yuffie's name. Oh, I actually yeah. had to go online say because I really never knew. Because I'm like, is it Yuffie? Yuffie? Is it Yiffy? No, no, it's not Yiffy. Not Yiffy. Um. So yeah, that 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 was a an half an hour of of quality entertainment. 
Uh, but yeah, we've just been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I have, uh, I've played, uh, let's see. The only, I, I really got hooked when I was still in college. Uh, so that was uh, mid to late 90s. And Final Fantasy III for the Super Nintendo was out. Mm-hmm. And my roommate had it, and he played it. And I'm like, oh, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And I knew we had a Super Nintendo at home, so I bought Final Fantasy III. And I played it, and I fell in love with the whole system. And then I got 7 and 8 and 9. And when the PS2 came out, I said, okay, as soon as they have another Final Fantasy, I'll get the PS2, and then I'll get this new game. And then 10 came out, and I'm like, oh, this is this all is trashing organized religion. I love this. <laughs> uh, and then 11 came out, and I really didn't do the online multiplayer RPG, mm. so I skipped over 11. Played 12, loved it, had my heart broken with 13 because it was just Final Fantasy Tunnel. Yeah. There, there really wasn't that much you could, I mean, until you got on the planet, and then it was just that one area that you could do whatever you wanted to, and even at that, it was still very, very limited. Yeah, you're very boxed in at that yeah. point in time. Yeah, and then 14 I skipped over because it was another uh, MMO RPG, and then I haven't played 15 yet, but I do have it in the in the warehouse so it it will be played sooner or later but yeah the most of the uh the most of the games that i play are uh 2d platformers because it just it brings me back to when yeah. you know like contra and castlevania and all that good stuff yeah yeah um uh so let's see i have like you know a couple hundred games on steam because they can all fit on a hard drive <laughs> yeah. i have a, i have I have, uh, you know, a good handful of PS2 games, uh, some PS3 games. I, unfortunately, I sold off all of my PS1 games, so my original copy of Final Fantasy VII, VIII, oh. IX are all gone. I think I had, like, a good handful of PS1 games. And like I said earlier, my brother has all of our NES games. Mm, yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. <laughs> but I- we have good fun. It's whenever I find like a game that I haven't seen or heard of, like a uh, like uh, when I was talking about Guerrilla War, I found that yeah. you, there's an NES emulator. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> and then and I immediately I I, I went to like uh, I I me- said okay, it's not really a quality library of an emulator if it doesn't have the the like Nightshade. Yes. No, like I, I, that is an obscure game. Oh yeah. And if it had, it has that. Oh my God! Okay, let's cross your fingers. Guerrilla War, and it had it. I'm like, oh, okay. Ooh. So I, I, yeah, I, I, I need to stream it just because, <laughs> and then have my son play it with me. Just so I mean, you can see an old generation and the new generation play together. Because we'll do that on occasion as well. Just mm-hmm. so like, I'm still trying to teach him how to run and jump at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, my daughter, she's not really into so many, but my, my uh, like on when I'm talking about run and jump, like on 2D games, right? Like I Mario mean, it, Brothers. It, well, yeah, like the like classic Mario Brothers. Yeah. He loves uh, Mario Odyssey, and uh, what well, we just got the Mario Golf game, and then uh, he there's a lot of Mario games that he's like he's he's big into Luigi's Mansion. Mm-hmm. Um, so and then there's a couple of Nintendo Switch games that we have. He's big into Minecraft, so that's something that we we can play together as well. So it's kind of like passing the torch down to the new generation of gamers. So it's 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 fun. It's, it's, it's video game one on one. Like yeah, like, you have you have to you have to be exposed at some point in time to mm-hmm. a traditional platformer just to get an idea like because like yeah. when the nes came out and you had mm-hmm. uh, mario brothers and then mario 2 and that nightmare of a bloody game <laughs> <laughs> like that was a far step away from the atari mm-hmm. 2600 right when i was even littler we had an intellivision oh wow i never had one of those oh uh, and you know just i mean just the controller itself that looked like a phone with mm-hmm. the discs down at the bottom and we, I mean, the games that we, we had games like Astro Smash and Poker and Blackjack. And as my brother called it when he was three, race horsing. And oh well, yeah, it, basically they, they give you some, they give you like, here's the, here's the eight horses. Yeah. Here are the odds on them. Pick your pony, and then they just run, and then they give you, you know, said the the track is muddy or it's dry, and then it's so many furlongs long, and then you just pick your pony, and then it just runs the race, and that was it, and that was 
entertainment for us. It just, <laughs> it was just a... dancing across. You hear the <laughs> and they cross a furlong and they go dong. <laughs> and we're like, oh my god, this is the fantastic, the most fantastic thing we've ever seen in our lives. Fast forward to 2020, and Norman Reedus's face is mapped onto it, and it looks like him. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> You got Conan O'Brien in a in a goofy hat, he's making exactly. quips about you and holding a baby that's able to communicate. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, it's it's. I mean, just. I mean, I mean, we're able to appreciate how far video gaming has come over the years. Yeah, that it's just. I'll I'll constantly, and I don't want to. I don't like pulling the when I was your age. Yeah. Stories, <laughs> but I still it's like you know, when I was a kid, the games that we had are were just like there is there you have a paddle down at the bottom and you try to break bricks up at the top oh, yeah. and it yeah. comes back down. Or we had the pong and then it's I mean it, Asteroids and, like, and Space yes, Invaders and exactly. yeah. <laughs> and my son started watching, you know, it's like this what what is it? This yellow guy is just chasing ghosts and eating dot. What is that? That's Pac Man, and yeah. don't you dare blast be blasphemous <laughs> against that some bitch. I, I swear. And he start. He. I mean, whenever we go like Walmart and they have like one of those mini arcades set up and they have yeah. like Pac Man or Miss, he'll flip it on. He'll start playing. and said, I almost got the whole thing, and I'm like, it, it, you have learned well, Gras. <laughs> 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 I almost got the cherries. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, okay. namaste. Yeah. <laughs> Calm your in. Yes. Play by intuition, son. Yes, yes. <laughs> you are you are on the journey down the brick road. It is fine. Yeah. yeah. I, like I, I grew up like I thought the coolest thing ever when I was a mm-hmm. kid was I saved up enough money. I had mm-hmm. I had the little part time job and the chores in the piggy bank. I saved up enough mm-hmm. money to have the power glove. And that, oh my god. <laughs> useless piece of shit <laughs> like i'm i am now i'm 42 years old i live by myself i'm in a, I, I have my i have my own little place it's an apartment but i have an htc vive vr setup in my mm-hmm. living room i was playing beat saber last night i was yep. playing gorn a couple of nights ago like and they think back like the rest of the thing the power glove are you yeah. kidding me <laughs> yeah i mean we bugged our mom to mm-hmm. get one and then her excuse was well what games can you play with it i said well there's the one game and <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a glove <laughs> um <laughs> Well, there's bound to be more. Well, when there's more, talk to yeah. me again. And there was like one, maybe two games for it. And then yeah. we started, maybe mom isn't as dumb as we think yeah. she is. Yeah. We did a little bit of growing up over the power glow. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, with, I, yeah. I, had, I had that thing. It was like you had this like Velcro on top of the old tube television and then set up the sensors and half the time that didn't work if the room was too dark it didn't work if the room was too bright it didn't work it just what a utter mess I ended up stripping that thing it was a part of a a Terminator costume when I was in like grade 7 I I remember I mean even I mean even the technology has you know uh, for my PS2 I actually have one of those uh, PSIs Oh yeah, yeah. And a downloadable game that I got, I think it's called Kung Fu Live, and it actually it it tracks your motion mm. so that you are actually this kung fu warrior in like a two D game. So you actually have to you know do the karate chopping and you have to do the kicking and jumping and fend off all of these. And I realized very very quickly that I am out of shape. <laughs> Very out of shape, cause I I was like, okay, level one, okay, this should be fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> oh, I got a stitch. Somebody pause it. I can't pause it. Somebody pause it. Give me a beer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be in the bathtub. Bring ice. <laughs> I I mean I have Beat Saber as well. We have yeah. a Oculus Quest, and I'll do that for a couple hours, and I'll just oh boy. Oh yeah. Uh, Sweat, sweat dripping down. Yeah. You're pounding Gatorade yeah, like it's and I'm saving like, your life. I can't life. see is sweat going in front of my eyes. The <laughs> cubes are blur, are blobs now. I don't know where yeah. those arrows come. 
<laughs> Did you think Please. that you would be where you are right now when it comes to just your presence in social media as well as the community that you have developed over this past well like how long have you been at this active in social media oh uh, well let's see um i got my start on youtube of like about 2012 okay said so before i was part of a, an online community called creepypasta basically what we did is um we would find online horror stories and the, the term creepypasta comes from another online reddit term called copy pasta where people would just copy the stories that they have heard somewhere else and they would paste them into reddit posts right and then so for a short story medium that was fantastic and then that had an offshoot that was just horror based and so in kind of going off of the the word copy paste it became creepy pasta right going on with that there were a slew of narrators there were a slew of authors there were a slew of musicians a slew of artists and we all kind of did our own thing and when it was kind of in its infancy back in 2010 11 12 and 13 it really got very very popular 2013 2014 right so what i was i was one of the narrators uh and i we would just I saw a couple videos, and I'm like, oh, well, I can do that. But I noticed one thing on all of these uh, YouTube videos is that it was just audio, and they would just have a static picture. I have a film degree. Oh. So I – and I have After Effects. I got Photoshop. Let's use this to its full potential. So I started doing actual animations, and that how that's how I kind of got my own niche into the whole thing. Uh, the old man part of my handle actually came from uh, the Creepypasta community. Uh, everyone was in their late teens, maybe early 20s, probably mid-20s. I was already well into my mid-30s, pushing 40 at the time. Right. So just by uh, age relevance, that's what made me the old man of the group. Yeah. Uh, and then somebody actually said, oh, my God, Murphy, you're such an old man. And it just stuck. So I just became old man Murphy. I was kind of like the wise sage that sat on top of the mountain. And they come. a lot of people would come to me with life advice, like, you've been through this. You have kids. You know what this is. And I'm like, yeah. So, well, my boyfriend's not talking to me. And so like, well, then don't talk to him back. <laughs> It's like, well, I'm going through this in high school. I said, well, that's the reason I graduated high school, so I wouldn't have to go through that ever again. <laughs> well, I don't want to do my homework. Well, then you're not going to graduate, son. Come on. Um, a, a lot a lot of the, I mean, you, <laughs> it really puts in perspective. And I'm thinking like these guys, oh, my God, I actually worried about that stuff when I was in in high school and in grade school but uh, right. getting back on topic um so that's where i started and then the community got extremely toxic because one or a, just like a handful of the narrators got really really popular very quickly mm. uh one of my really good friends one of his videos was featured in an article just like one of mine was very recently uh on tiktok one of his videos was featured on a on a very popular online magazine and his subscriber count shot up from like 50 to 75,000 to 500,000 overnight on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Wow. And yeah, it was just it monumentally just he exploded. Right. And to this day he's got multiple million uh followers. He goes from convention to convention just telling horror stories is that's his big thing. Uh and as soon as that happened a throng, and that's where I really started to see, you know, all these entitled kids saying like, oh, well, I can read a story on on YouTube and I can make millions of followers. And as soon as that didn't happen, they turned their anger on everybody else instead of actually, you know, honing their craft and, you know, really, you know, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, what are your more popular videos? Why did those succeed? Uh, should you have a more consistent a consistent schedule when you release videos mm -hmm. instead of looking internally on a lot of these things they started lashing out on everybody else and eventually that caused a rift in the entire community and it just it pretty much just self uh, self uh, destructed it itself and then i got out 2015 or 16 mm. and this was already after that that slender man stabbing that happened in wisconsin Right. Uh, yeah, and we had a big. Uh, that really didn't happen that far from where I actually live, so that it kind of hit home in like, well, now my online and my real life 
worlds are affected at the same time. So I'm kind of tripping about that. Um, but we did a whole big run of fundraiser for it. We raised over like eight thousand, nine thousand dollars for the family that was affected. Uh, and they were eternally grateful for that. Uh, I mean, the big thing was, oh, my God, creepypasta is evil. We need to burn this. And I remember the last time Americans wanted to burn literature, and it did not go over well. So let's stop blaming the stories and blaming the people that aren't policing their children on the stories that they read. Because on 9 out of 10 sources for all of this material, it says... This is for mature audiences only. Uh, a lot of a lot more websites had to put up a lot more policing after that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got out of that about uh, 2015, 2016, and I was pretty much just laying low. You know, it was, I was doing streams on um, on Twitch. Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of a Twitter presence residual. I still did a YouTube video now and then, not as much. And then TikTok came around. Well, it was musically. Right. came around and I'm like oh, this is fun I don't know what much I can do but this is kind of fun I didn't really pay much attention to it I didn't put any stock into it didn't make any much video like maybe one or two right and then the pandemic hit and then I just got stir crazy and I saw, saw that a lot of people were going to this TikTok and I'm like well let's check it out and then I downloaded it and I said like oh more videos but in a shorter format and you get a real almost of an instant return investment you see uh, comments and likes and uh, a follower count happen a lot quicker than on mm -hmm. YouTube. So I'm yeah. like, okay, let's try this. So my first account, Old Man Murphy 76, no underscore. I got up to 36,000 followers, and okay. then my account was banned permanently. For what and reason? For what reason? The reason. I'd like to think it was my dazzling charm, but it wasn't. It was, um, uh, the, I've, I did a video where I showed uh, an American girl who was holding an AK-47, had the American flag behind her, and holding a Bible with the other hand. And I, I made the comparison between that and then a girl who had uh, an ISIS flag behind her, an AK-47, and hoard, holding the Koran. And I said, if you don't, if you don't realize that the only difference between these two photos is the holy book that you're hold, they're holding, then you're part of the problem because we have extremists over here as we have as they have over there. It has nothing to do with the color of their skin or their clothing or even you know what's behind them. It's that they're using this book that they're holding to. Justify their extremism. extremism. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then the amount of vitriol that just lurched at me mm. was uh, it was all it was awe inspiring. I was oh, like, okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't know there were so many assholes in this country <laughs> that are completely blind to the fact that there is another country on the other side of the world that thinks the exact same thing that we do about them. Mm. And then one day I woke up and my account was just banned Damn. permanently. And I'm like, what the shit? And then I appealed it, I emailed it, and I got it back, but then I was put on a... Uh, okay, so what happened? I was put on a one-week posting ban. Mm. And then I had, I think, two days left on that posting ban, and then my account was permanently banned while I was on a posting ban, and I'm like, what the shit? So I emailed him, I said, what are you doing? Yeah. This isn't right, I'm already banned, how can I be punished when I'm already punished? And they say, oh, we're sorry, it was a clerical error. Bullshit. Wh uh, which so part of it was a clerical yeah, error? Exactly, <laughs> oh, we, we didn't cross the T and dot the I correctly. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, so my account was reinstated, no. And then I said, I think I had my account back for four hours and I was put on another posting ban. I'm like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> um, I already had my backup, which was old man Murphy underscore 76. Right. And I told everybody, this is my backup. Follow me here because I don't know what the shit's going on over there. And then my original uh, with another two days left was gone. <sighs> and I emailed them. I, re I appealed it and they wouldn't bring it back. So I'm like, well, shit, I'm starting over. And then I was like, okay, we're we're gonna play this a little differently. 
Uh, I mean, we're still going to do what we do. We're going to be a little bit more, a little bit more educated about. It. We're not just, you know, like, because that's the problem that Ned Stark had at the beginning of Game of Thrones. I mean, he just wanted to go out. You're wrong, and you're wrong, and you're wrong, and that's what lost. He that's how he lost his head. <laughs> so the way I'm doing it now is I'm doing it a little bit. It's like, well, if you, if if I want to point your, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that you're wrong. I'm gonna have you point out that you are wrong yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, I'm gonna use your stupidity as my weapon, and that's you know when the comment I I after what happened in July, a lot of us were getting. Uh, posting bans for just ridiculous reasons. Like I got posting bans for adult nudity and sexual content. When... Well, hold on, hold on. You are a rather attractive man. Let, let's well, let's you... just get that out there. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, well, I mean, uh, but I mean, adult nudity yeah. and sexual content. Even my wife doesn't want to see me naked at some time. <laughs> Why would I force that on anybody else? Uh, so, I mean, that's I'm not fully, the that's not the I, avenue of TikTok that you want no, to be going down. Well, you know, yeah. if I wanted to twerk, I'd have to be ten years younger. But that, no, um, that's not my audience. That's not, <laughs> I mean, I I do have I do have a kink talk following though because I I made a video saying that you know I liked a video and I wasn't reading the hashtags. Mm. wasn't reading the hashtags and I'm like oh I like the concept but they had a hashtag kink talk in it so you like that and then the algorithm th algorithm automatically thinks oh you like old man Murphy talk. wants more of this <laughs> yes. so here here here's a here's a double sided donkey dong for you <laughs> hold on hold on <laughs> hold on let me <laughs> honey Honey, do we have a two hundred dollars that we can spend right now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, there, some of this stuff has come across. My, yeah, my dad is just like, I have to turn my phone away. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm gonna favorite that and show the wife later. <laughs> um, but yeah, some of this stuff is like, I did not need to see that. Yeah, I, I I will I will watch that several times. What are you watching, honey? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. Not watching anything. Yeah. Put Just... your pants down around your ankles. I'm chafing. Yeah, I'm chafing. <laughs> it's, it's been a hot day, and so I'm a little sweaty, and I'm I'm drying out the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me what's on my phone, honey. Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> I, I'm just it's it's nothing. It's nothing. It's, no, no it's, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. So. But, yeah, yeah, so I mean, yeah, my thing that I, I mean, with with my presence that I do now is, you know, I try to. Uh, it's a combination of education and humor, and that mm. helps retain a lot of my audience because they'll come back saying, "They'll." I the best comments that I've gotten are like, "I've been waiting for your take on this," and and it's and the the comedy ensues. So mm -hmm. it's. Mm -hmm. You uh, so, so like when it when it comes down to everything that you've done, like you you've had your your primary account shut down after thirty six thousand followers, and then you have a backup. Now you have Well Hey Productions, like correct? Yeah, that was all. Oh, Well Hey Productions has been my uh, my moniker ever since college when I was going to film school. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, I didn't have to, but it was like you know what I'm gonna say a, a Well Hey Productions film after, before at the beginning of all of my film projects. Right. So I, I did that. That started in 1995. And then so, yeah, that's what that's uh, uh, it's on the top of my uh, my Twitter account, my Instagram. I mean, everything. It'll be well, hey, productions. But, you know, I'm just the guy doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I got uh, my main account. It was was taken down. I still I still go by well, hey, productions. But, you know, right. it's just me. So it's just Murphy. Uh, so, yeah, I have my main account now and then two backups just in case, because at some point my main had a. Uh, posting block and then my backup had a posting block and now I had to have a third one because fuck the man <laughs> <laughs> so this is all uh, correct me if I'm wrong I, I'm <laughs> like I'm just on the outside looking inward at this point in time this <laughs> is all because of the fact that you not not just dip your toe but you go flat foot into uh, some of the idiocracy of the political realm when it comes to the United States. Now, mm. like I'm Canadian, I live in British mm. Columbia. Um, mm. but being 
Canadian and watching everything that was going on with the United States and uh, the absolute horrific tragedy that was January 6th yep. and then the the fake news and the lies and mm-hmm. sweet potato Hitler and the whole deal like I, I, yeah. I haven't heard that one yet. <laughs> I love it. I Little Hitler. I love that. <laughs> cred, credit to comedian Christopher Titus. That's where I got that one oh, from. Okay. All right. Um, All right. That's not mine. So um, I, I prefer to call him the, the fat man, bad tan, no plan man. So <laughs> anyway, being a Canadian watching everything that's going on in the United States, like I was getting anxiety. But being yeah. an American, and especially with how you go about things and how you – do your time like you do the research you make time to make sure that what information you have is correct and then when you don't have something correct you stand up and go my bad but this entire presence that you have created and gone on through and the battle you have on tiktok is it is it something that you had any idea that you'd find yourself in because someone with a, a a a background in film is now one of the foremost information sources and comedic sources when it comes to the political realm on TikTok. No. <laughs> no, I thought I thought I was just going to be doing lip sync videos with my son. We, I mean, there's a video of me and uh, we did the whole uh, back and forth between Macaulay Culkin and uh, John Candy and Uncle Buck. Uh, Great movie. We did, uh, we, we did that whole, you know, so like, uh, do you live alone? Uh, do you re- uh, own a rent? Rent. Uh, house or apartment? Apartment. Do you, are you married? No. How come? It's a long story. Do you have kids? No. How come? It's even a longer story. That whole, we did, uh, uh, my son was absolutely fantastic in that. Mm-hmm. We did another one with the whole, uh, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball from dodgeball. Love that. Um, we just did Running Scared, the whole of uh, that scene where there's that little kid hiding behind the, the older Latina woman and Billy Crystal is interviewing her and he keeps on flipping off Gregory Hines just released that one about a couple of days ago right uh, i thought that was going to be my platform but then god i can't even remember the news article that just dragged me into the deep end mm. but it was just one of those you have to be on crack to believe this is true mm. and then the comments that came back on that is like oh well it's fake news fake news and well what actually is fake news? I mean, how can you tell me from the safety of your armchair and, and you know, you're too busy trying to get that last Pringle out of the can and you're flipping between uh, Girls Gone Wild and NASCAR. <laughs> how can you tell me what's real news and what's fake when all, you're, all you listen to is Tucker Carlson's... That's, that's all, that's... I mean, he's, he looks like a dog that's lost or you told him to fetch a stick when you didn't throw anything. <laughs> and he's just got that lost puppy look. So please, somebody tell me what to do because I don't know what I'm doing up here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, But I'm just like, you know what? There's way too much bullshit going on. Mm. And this this mentality actually stemmed from uh one of my... Uh, my son is in youth hockey. And his second his second year, we had a head coach that was an absolute moron. Mm. He 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 came from a soccer background, and he thought, well, hockey's only soccer on ice. And we're all like, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no. Um, and and then at the end of the year, at the end of the year, we were at a tournament, and the the mc and i was just near near where uh, i was just really close enough so i could hear this conversation the mc for the tournament told our coach said well it would really be nice if you hand out all of these participation medals to your to your team hmm. and then call them by name it's a little bit more of a personal thing and he started sweating and then he slaughtered every single one of their names he could not remember a single one of them on his own and, team on his own team even even the the assistant head coach had a kid on the team, couldn't remember how to pronounce the last name, and his guys like, dude, we, we, I'm, <laughs> we've been talking this entire time, and so I I took it upon myself as like, you know, if you don't like the situation that you're in, 
you make the change yourself because no one's going to do it for you. So the next season, I became the team, uh, became our team manager, and mm-hmm. I helped get everything organized. And I made absolutely goddamn sure that our head coach knew all the kids' names because I learned them like in the first week, week and a half. And I had all of them written down, and I knew all the parents, and I just made sure all of this so that everybody was a really well-oiled machine. Right. And then the coach was like, okay, well, I can call this guy by this name because that's that I can say this guy's name and this guy's name. And then it just – we had a great season mm-hmm. because he, everyone was on a first-name basis. So I took that mentality, and I applied it to here. Like, you know, I don't like the situation that this government's in. And I know that people are bitching about, you know, well, is this fake news? Is that fake news? Well, I'm going to get all the source material that I possibly can. I'll see an article. I said, well, how how reputable is this article? And so I, you know, I research, you know, the the reputation of, you know, the the source that I'm getting it from, whether it be from HuffPost or from MSNBC right. or from The Guardian or The Hill or wherever I get my my article from. You know, how how reputable are they in a not so much if they're left leaning or right leaning, but in just just an overall, you know, being Walter Cronkite up here to, you know, uh, Adrian Maury, Cronauer, <laughs> Maury Povich. I yeah, would even okay. put Adrian Cronauer because I mean, let's yeah. say, what the hell was that? That's a good response <laughs> to most everything that happens in this country. Yeah. So yeah, my my thing is is if I see if I see, uh, I'll take an article. And, you know, I'll say, this is what's going on, and I'll mix my opinion in on it, but then I'll try to give just, like, a realistic, like, what the fuck? Like, uh, my my big thing right now, and, and I knew it was going to happen, this whole thing with Kyle Rittenhouse. Right. When it, when it, hap- it happened in Kenosha. That's yes. 45 minutes from me. I've... I have friends that live in Kenosha. So for that to happen, I knew it was just going to get swept under the rug because Americans get bored really quickly. So anytime something comes up that's uh, that's Kyle Rittenhouse related, I'm like, Kyle Rittenhouse update, boom, here you go. You got to know about this stuff because, you know, Fox News ain't talking about it. CNN ain't talking about it. MSNBC is not talking about it. Someone's got to talk about it. Right. And even at that, I'm just reading... I'm just reading the article verbatim and I will get I will get people in the comments saying it's fake news he didn't do anything he he's a he's an he's American hero uh, uh, he should have shot them other more, more other people dead oh, God, and I'm yeah. like okay no, five out of the six words that you used in that in in that comment were misspelled yeah. <laughs> uh <laughs> Already off to a flying start. Uh, uh, so, okay, let me get the blackboard out. Well, so yeah, 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 this. yeah. See, here's your spelling pet S- spelling test. Okay, you got your wrong. Okay, you there. That's wrong. It. We're talking about he he shot two people dead, and you spelled it T O O. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sh. I'll, I'll I'll read comments. I'll be. Sh- and the, the veins oh yeah yeah out and yeah have a beer you'll be fine okay <laughs> <laughs> i need a reset hold on i need to step away <laughs> need to come back give me a moment I, but yeah that's that's how i and a lot of the the lot of the the cruel stuff that i will get like i mean i've gotten death threats i've gotten mm. real like people have said oh i'll take your children back out and have them shot and it was just really horrible things yeah I don't even have, I'll just, you know, I mean, like one of them said, like, you know what, I'll set house to your fire and I hope that you and your family are still inside. And I'll just sit there and go, yep. (laughs) That video that I did was taken down for harassment and bullying. I'm like, wait a minute, sunshine. The one that's getting death threats here, it was, (laughs) it has been reinstated uh, since then, but still for, what? So the whole platform as a whole is... Broken, to say the least. It's a crap shoot. Yeah. So, I mean, I haven't... I'm not going to say anything about getting my videos taken down or this, that, because I'm going to jinx myself because I'm superstitious. But (laughs) I've been fairly fortuitous lately. So I'll keep it at that. But yeah, I mean, that's that's my uh, my thing. If, If I, you know, I see, I, I see an article that, uh, you know, well, this, this 
uh, I know there's going to be a lot of headlines that a lot of my mutuals are going to be talking about. Right. So I really don't need my two cents. Like with the Afghanistan thing, for instance, yes. I do not have any military experience at all. Never. The closest thing I have to military experience is marching band. That's it. Yeah. Um, so I know there's a handful of veterans uh, that are on TikTok and that were <clears throat> stationed in Afghanistan They'll give you a much better out, uh, much better aspect of what's going on than I ever could. Yeah, I'll yeah. just call you know the bullshit that's happening here on the home front. Like, oh, it's Biden's fault. Is it? Well, you guys remember that you know the rally where he said he's bringing the troops back. You remember that? No, I don't remember that. At all. <laughs> A little okay, selective go, amnesia. <laughs> uh, uh, Gomer, it was right after your sister mother's wedding. <laughs> you remember that one? <laughs> no, I wasn't there. I was. I, 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 I was fucking the pig. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, well, YouTube is there for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, yeah, the the selective amnesia is the part that I just. No sunshine. We're we're gonna we're gonna spank you and we're gonna spank you hard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. The uh, I, I like I work in media and mm -hmm. uh, like I'm a radio host, but I I host a a music radio show. I used to have a talk radio show, which was completely different, uh, cl completely different format, cl completely different style, and yeah. it was more entertainment. But at the same time, like you can't help but every once in a while get into something political because that's just the topic at hand. Mm -hmm. um, I was asked by uh, a few friends and family members because I have a, a, a very short, but I do have a background in the military, Canadian okay. military. Right. And they're like, what do you think? It's like, I This is such a cluster. I have no fucking idea. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, this was the ball was started when Trump was in office and Biden was basically left with the check and mm -hmm you know everything just fell apart and there's yeah. no right answer here at all right and so yeah i mean when military uh when a cur current military is saying we left them with everything they needed and for them to fall apart in 11 days Horrific. is mind-boggling we don't know how it happened there are some other there are other experts that are saying you can only give them so many tools and if they don't want to help themselves you can't you can't babysit your kids forever i know it's really it's really you know kind of it's it's kind of kind of insulting to you know call afghanistan children at, but mm. in this just in this situation that yes. you know we're trying to help them out and so they can build their military and build their the strength of their country so that it, this wouldn't happen Yes, and if you're not taking the input, and you're you, and nothing's happening, and nothing's working, and everything's you know it's it's a constant uphill battle both ways in the snow for five miles. Mm -hmm. That when you pull out and it just completely just Falls like apart. you were never there. Yeah, then pulling out was the right answer because we have wasted how many trillions of dollars over there. Just you know, pushing that stone, just being Sisyphus and pushing that stone uphill, only to have it roll back down at our feet every single day. There's a lot more useful things we could have been using that money for. We could have been doing for for uh, more uh, a better healthcare system, yeah. more a uh, better infrastructure, better education. Um, but but no, people want. The, make 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 the man with the gun go rooty tooty shooty, and that that makes me feel about half the Fourth of July with the sparklers. It, it, <laughs> You're right, though. Like they should have been like the, using the metaphor of the boulder rolling up a hill. Like yeah. it, you know, it would have made more sense if there was any sort of uh, a rut that would prevent that boulder from getting to a certain point. But clearly, yeah. that wasn't what happened. There no, was no. Was. There was no backstops. There was no checks, no nothing like that. And to watch an entire, like, 20 years plus just mm -hmm. go gone. Yep. And then the whole situation, like, yeah, the whole thing was absolutely utter horrific. But then you get yep. the people that are the armchair warriors who yeah. are like, they should have done this. They should. How do you fucking know? It's, like, it's the same people that say, well, Brett Favre should have thrown that court, that, that touchdown when... 
when I've been, I, I, I never touched football since high school. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, dude, you didn't even play football in high school. You were on the cheerleading squad. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> It's, it wasn't even on the stand- cheerleading squad. They were behind the cheerleading squad you, you, in the stands. You were, you were operating the hot dog stand outside <laughs> of the grandstand, you son of a bitch. You shut your mouth. Uh, it's, it's those people that, you know, they. It's, it's easier to criticize and point out negative things than to say, okay, what did we learn from this? Yes. And... It's it, unfortunately that is our country. We are we are a people of we need absolute guaranteed immediate automatic satisfaction, or it's a, a complete failure. Mm. And Canada, I, I I can sorry I can I can say that Canada is very much the same. Like uh, there's yes. a lot of things that have been going on in Canada with the government, and we just had a snap election announced, and the whole deal, and of course dealing with the pandemic. Very much mm-hmm. the same thing is like you know Canadians, uh, a lot more of the extremist and less patient ones. Like oh, we want answers, we want answers now, and if it's not mm-hmm. done right, it's not done our way, then it's wrong, and we're going to be upset about it. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, it's 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 fine. Uh, you're better off because you have weed. <laughs> <laughs> Give it time. Give it time. <laughs> I okay in Wis- Okay, so I I hate if I didn't all now being from Wisconsin, I'm a Green Bay Packer fan, yes. and I already hate the Bear. I, uh, I it's it's a love hate relation. I hate the Vikings more, mm. but uh, with the Bears, it's it's the longest NFL rivalry in history. So I have a, a mutual respect, but still, and and now that they have completely legalized weed across the board in Illinois I mm. hate them even more <laughs> just, just, get, get, let me just, let me buy a nickel bag off of you come on please no it's illegal. Look, I hate you <laughs> Have I need it. can't you see I'm red in the face <laughs> I, I mean, and the reason we don't have it is we have a democratic uh, we have a democratic governor mm. who's a former educator and he's trying to do as much as he possibly can when our old Republican governor was voted out right. they wrote all of these lame duck laws that limited the power of the governor and we have a republican led legislature that pretty much just says hey did you vote for us no you did you vote for us yeah okay we'll bend over did you not vote for us okay we'll still bend over we're going to fuck you in the ass and and it's just <laughs> it, it uh, with the mask mandates around here it yeah. was it was our governor said okay issuing a mask mandate and then they would let it go the 60 days or the 90 days, however much, however long it lasts. Yeah. And then he would immediately slap on another executive order saying another mask mandate. And the legislature said, well, you can't do that. And the our governor being an educator, he's able to read books, which Republicans are not able to do. So he read through the whole charter and said, there is no law, no mandate, no nothing that says I can't have an executive order after an executive order has already elapsed. And the Republicans got so pissed that Tony Evers can play the game and he has proven time and time again that he can play it better. Yeah, it's it's I, I love watching it, but at the same time, it's extremely as frustrating for us when we just want to get stuff done. We want to be safer. We want to have better uh, with with school starting up again. Mm-hmm. Really? So there's no mask mandates around here. My, both my kids are going to be going back to school. We've already told them flat out. You're wearing a mask. I'll staple it to your goddamn face if I have to, because there the, no one has said anything about that. We're, we're forcing they're all optional. I said, no, that's mm-hmm. not an option for us. Yeah. The Delta variant being really rampant, is we can't take any chances. We can't make any more kids. We we can't. We've cut off the baby making factory. There's there's no more coming into this house. So we'd like to keep you. <laughs> we'd like to keep you. You're on the grid. You're on the grid. We they know we have you. <laughs> we have the set. It's not improved. That's yeah. it. It's, yeah. a, it's a collector set. And I swear to God, you guys are going for like five million on eBay. And if one of you leaves, it's not a complete set. And yeah. we really would like to get the return investment. On. Yeah. <laughs>
Has has anything uh, surprised you when it comes to TikTok, either uh, from your following, uh, your supporters, or other TikTok, or even just social media creators in general? Has anything surprised you in a uh, positive note? People want to make fan art of me. Fan art? Yeah. Uh, oh, God. One, somebody made a, a video. Uh, they drew fan art of me, and I'm like... I, and I actually posed the question as to, like, I wonder if there's any fan art of me because I, I, I mean, when I was on YouTube and I had like a complete online persona cause I didn't show my face at all. Mm -hmm. I had a complete online persona and people would actually, you know, say, Oh, this is, this is what I think your character looks like. This is what I think your character looks like. And I still have all of those pieces of art and I cherish them deeply. Mm -hmm. But when I show my real face, I'm thinking, you know, I mean, you're not going to get fan art. You're not a character. You're a person. They can see you're a person. They can see your chest moving. You're not a cartoon character anymore. So when I just, I made a video and I was just, you know, just joshing around. I just think, I wonder if there is any. And then huh. somebody said, oh, I'll make some for you. Said, it wasn't a request. They said, no, I want to do it. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then I I got like like five or ten videos of people that have, you know, drawn fan art on me I'm like oh my god this is awesome and i always try to duet them to say this is great because i want to give them the proper credit and the proper respect it's this is awesome you didn't have to you wanted to and so thank you from the bottom of my heart that you did mm -hmm. uh the one uh he he drew he showed it in like different stages of, of its completion and he sent me the original copy Wow. And he, he like, he, he, you know, made sure it wouldn't get bent. It wouldn't get wrinkled or anything like that. I sent it to my post box. And then I opened and I wasn't, ex I, I didn't know his actual name so that when he texted me uh, or emailed me, I didn't recognize. I said, I, I made some fan art of you. I want to send it to you. Do you have a post box? I said, yeah, it's on my beacons page. You can just go there. I was, oh, okay. Um, so then I got the, I got the, the notification. I got something in my, uh, my, my mailbox. I picked it up. I'm like, holy this geez. and i'm actually feeling it and i'm like oh this is he this is the act this is the original one he didn't send me a print or anything like that this oh this is i gotta go to hobby lobby and get this friend <laughs> it, it's a work of art it's fantastic um so yeah every piece of fan art that i've got that's probably the most a uh, fantastic thing mm -hmm. the other fantastic things that i've seen in just little little bits is when i you i i i i have a couple catchphrases that i use and i didn't think they'd catch on until i started people saying them in comments of other people's videos and then tagging me oh. like was i i've seen people see uh like like on some right leaning or just completely <clears throat> over the top qa non video said yeah. stop being a chuckle fuck care <laughs> of old man murphy 76 and um just a little tear yeah, in your eye. Like, <laughs> we're growing up. <laughs> I'm a proud daddy. Uh, also, when anybody just looks at the camera for a while, guess what? And, yeah. and, and, I, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I literally, I squee. And I just get all giddy and happy. Like, yes. Um, and then when people started asking, do you have merch? I need your merch. You got to have merch. And I'm like, yeah, I got a merch store. And then people started buying my stuff. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just, cause, I mean, I, the main reason I do all my videos is just to do them. Right. I, I've told, I've told a lot of people this, that I don't care if I have a million followers or one follower, I'll still be putting out the same things regardless. It's just a perk that I have close to 200,000 now. It's so, yeah. yeah. And uh, we'll just keep on going until, until they, uh, until TikTok goes off the air. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not going to, I mean, even if they, they stop me a second time, I got two more backup accounts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll start I'm... all over if I have to. I'm like a bad penny. I always turn up. <laughs> well, you're you're not just on TikTok, as you said before. Hmm. You you started out on YouTube. Yeah. You stream on Twitch. Uh, you do have an Instagram account. Yeah. Yes, and yeah, you're on the, Twitter. Yeah, most so. of the yeah most of the most of the stuff I put on Instagram is you know stuff like hey I'm I'm at I'm at a county fair and these are my kids. 
uh, or sometimes I'll, I'll if I really if one of my TikToks really goes really goes well, I say okay, I'll share it over on Instagram. The only thing that I really don't like about you know porting things over to TikTok to Instagram is the for just the aspect ratio yeah. because TikTok is you know they got the longer videos and then you got to somehow get them into squares. Yeah, and then it's just like uh, it's gonna cut off the top and bottom, and then I got to put it through a thing to edit to crop it and resize it. I'd rather just watch TikToks more, so <laughs> it's just like, oh, that's how to. Okay, so that girl's got big boobs. That girl's shaking her ass. <laughs> oh, more. Oh, that I I know her. She's talking about some Trump pansy that's you know going off the deep end. Oh, there's mm-hmm. another one of my friends. Oh, somebody else shaking their ass. Okay, there's somebody lip syncing. Oh, that's how to build a a wooden a wooden dildo. What? <laughs> um, it's how, it's just, I really should put that on Instagram. I should put it on Twitter. If I put more effort into my Instagram and Twitter, they might, you know, have a more of a following. Yeah. Um, I've told people, and you say, hey, you follow all my stuff. Uh, you can go to my Beacons page. You can follow all my, my Twitter, my Instagram, all this stuff. I have links to everything there. So hmm. I, I'm kind of leaving it up to them if they want to or not. Uh, just to keep, you know, the followers instead of just people that follow me just to follow me that, oh, they ended up on my FYP, they they said something funny, follow, and then they really don't care about any of my other stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm more in tune with, you know, the people that follow me and comment all the time and you know, they, they're in the audience for the live streams and, you know, I, you know, the ones that I interact with more, those are the ones that say, hey, you know, do the thing, go over here, I'm over here, I'm over there. Yeah. So... If it's less, it's more, it's quality over quantity on some of my older uh, social media sites. A few fun questions before we wrap up here. What is your favorite amusement park ride at the fair? Since I haven't seen one in a long time, I used to love the Scrambler. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, if, if you guys don't know what a Scrambler is, uh, it's kind of like three mechanisms in a triangle configuration, but they spin on a on a central spindle. But in those three configurations, there's also three uh kind of carts and those spin around so you're spinning around in those circles when the triangle is spinning around in a bigger circle and it pretty much it's kind of like sitting inside uh a a KitchenAid mixer (laughs) and and then you instead of you know screaming you're getting mixed up you're going (laughs) there comes the corn dog um that that's the one i love the tilt the world always the tilt the world i finally got both my kids on there was a there was a a, a parish festival mm. that's like uh like just down the street from us, yeah. and I saw they had a tilt the world, and I've got my son on one, but not my daughter and my son, so I was in the middle, and both my kids are on either side because I didn't know which way this thing was going to spin because it could go either way. Yeah. So I'm in the middle, so I can get both of them at the same time if I want to. Just elbow. <laughs> oh, didn't mean to hit. Oh. <laughs> Hip check, hip uh, check. So I'm, just, I'm just like, no, got it. Okay, this I got to make sure that they're having fun. So I'm holding my arms in, and then my wife, who doesn't like spinny rides at all, yeah. uh, she's on the outside. And <clears throat> I mean, we both have Android Galaxies, so she flips her camera to the slow motion, and then we come around, and it pans in beautiful that our comp- that our little cart swings forward. So it's we're facing her. And then you see my son's face going, and, I'm just, and my daughter's face is like, and then I'm in the middle just going, and it's just, all in slow motion, and you can see my son's like, I'm going to throw up. And my, my daughter's like, I don't know how to take this. And I'm like, I love it. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tie between those two, the Scrambler and the tilt the world the, Both of them fun rides, quite frankly. Oh, yeah, great. Um, where do you, where do you want to take your online presence in the future? Where do you hope to be? Let's like the typical, uh, job interview question. Where do you see yourself in five years? Yeah. Um, hopefully still doing TikToks okay. in five years. I would love to still be doing this because it's, it's, it's a way for me to actually put any use to my degree. Uh, because, uh, I mean, cause I work, I work in it and, and website development and, and design. So I really don't get to make that many movies, uh, uh for, uh, you know, for, for professional means. So still doing this five years from now, I, I would absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. Um, I hopefully in five years, I'll have a, a much bigger following. If it's, if it's less than where I am, I'm obviously doing something wrong and need to step away. Mm. You know, if if other people, you know, reach out and they say, you know, 
we love your presence online. We'd like to, you know, have you for this, or we'd like to have you for that. Or um, <clears throat> I've actually had somebody say, uh, have you ever done, have you ever considered doing a uh, voice acting? And I'm like, ah, I have. Uh, and then I point them to this, that, the other thing. And I have my, uh, the, uh, a friend of a friend did a mod for, was it New Vegas? Uh, okay. Fallout New Vegas. And he did a complete mod for it called New California. And he needed voice actors, and he was struggling to find a couple. And my friend and my friend went to this developer and said, "I know a guy who would be perfect for a lot of these voices." And reached out to me. I recorded a whole mess of lines. So technically, I'm in a video game. Oh, and I'm that's like, cool. I'm like, and I and and I don't play Fallout, but I I've seen video uh, playthroughs of this mod, and I heard myself, and I'm like. I'm in a video game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's my, I mean, my ultimate dream has always been to voice a cartoon character. Cool. So this is just not that far from that. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a video game character and it's not like, you know, a, a, a weekly or a daily recurring thing, uh, like an episodal thing, but it's a step closer. And I'm like, gosh. So yeah, I, w I would love to be doing, you know, more voice work. I would love to still be doing videos. You know, if people, uh, I think I just, just that the fact that opportunities are still coming, I think that would, that would be the thing that that's great. That's, you know, it's, oh, well, we don't want to talk to him anymore. He's old news. Then that's like, ugh. well, you can always rely you know, on your I, looks. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm grayer. I'm, I'm, I'm scuzzier. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I haven't taken a shower in five days. Do you really <laughs> want him representing you? For Doritos, yeah. well, that is our that is our target audience. Yeah. Maybe he's not that bad of a candidate anymore. Uh, but you know, uh, so yeah. As long as as long as you know, um, I'll put it this way: hmm. if I if I if I'm still doing it, and it's more of a chore for me to continue to do it, I'm going to stop because right. it's no longer fun for me. Right. As so as soon as it stops being fun, I'm going to stop. Gotcha. As long as you're still having fun creating, you will continue to create. Exactly. Gotcha. Where can people find you on social media, and where do you want them to find you on social media? Glad you asked. Obviously, you guys can find me, uh, Old Man Murphy underscore 76 on TikTok. Uh, I do have a Beacons page on my bio, which is beacons.page slash Old Man Murphy 76, and that has all of my social media presence. On Twitch, I'm twitch.tv slash wellheyproductions. Twitter, I am oldmanmurphy76. Instagram, I'm also oldmanmurphy76. I'm on The Clapper, which is oldmanmurphy underscore 76. YouTube, which is youtube.com slash wellheyproductions. And Facebook, which is facebook.com slash wellheyproductions. Thank you so much for your time, Murph. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.